Hello and welcome to the Toasted Tale podcast with me, Jim. Thank you for joining us today. In this episode, I'd like to talk about grief. While I was scrolling the news feeds yesterday, actually, I saw that comedian and former SNL anchor Norm MacDonald died on September 14th, 2021. As I was reading through some of the comments by his fans across the world, it made me think about how painful it can be when someone we look up to or have had great memories of passes away. And it made me think about experiences that I've gone through where I've just been living my life and then the ground I've been standing on has felt like it's been shaken to its core because someone I have respected, someone I've really grown to care about has passed away. Now, this kind of grief for a death of someone makes a lot of sense for someone that you are very close to. A loved family member, friend, work colleague, that kind of thing. Someone you've spent a lot of time with. But it did make me think about why we mourn and grieve celebrities. People we may have never met, only seen on a screen perhaps, but their death still has a great impact on our lives. I think it's always good to start with a personal memory. The event that is stuck in my mind was on the evening of the 11th of August 2014, when, as I was doing some late night writing, on my newsfeed, a notification tells me that Robin Williams, the actor, had passed away. Shocked and a bit disbelieving, I I instantly almost forgot what I was doing, researching just to find out if it was in fact true. I was hoping to find that it was just some kind of hoax, some kind of fake news. And before I was able to find any concrete answers, my brother had come down from his room with his phone in hand going, have you heard? Robin Williams has passed away. And it both hit us very hard. I look back now and I I wonder why. He's made a lot of good films that have impacted a lot of people. His performance in Jumanji, playing Alan Parrish, is a particular highlight for me. It was a film I loved as a child. So why did his death, a man that I'd only ever seen in films or on television, hit me so hard. And I wasn't alone. The outpour of grief throughout the world, you could feel it in the air. In this podcast, I'm going to look into why we grieve and do a bit of research to find out a bit more because I'm interested. What I found out was intriguing. Celebrities and people in the limelight hold a very special place in society. Because of their ability to connect to everyone, and as they often star in media which directly connects to people, parasocial relationships can form, which can imitate friendship. These are one-way connections, but people watching a film, like me watching Jumanji, formed a connection with the actors bringing me joy on screen. The chemical makeup that allows us to form strong bonds with those we are close to is replicated in this way. The death of these parasocial friends, therefore, can hit us deeply. As I also mentioned previously, a lot of these actors we formed these kind of connections to may have featured in poignant parts of our past. There's a lot of actors who have died who starred in movies that I grew up watching. And there is a nostalgia that is lost when you know that someone who put their voice, acting talent, or time into a project that had such a connection with your past, something dies there along with the actor's death. You may in fact find yourself grieving the nostalgia that is now lost, as well as the individual themselves. Something else that I thought was really impactful was the way a death of a celebrity figure can remind us of our own mortality. 
not only when a celebrity dies does it remind us that death happens to us all. No matter how much money or fame you have, none of us can escape what's to come. You can't be too special to escape death. No one really likes to think about dying, but when someone who we have formed a relationship with, regardless of whether it is intimate or a parasocial one that we have with celebrities, it could make us feel uncomfortable. Another reason that we may find it very difficult is because of something called the availability heuristic. This is where an individual who can identify one or two examples of something may be led to believe that that specific thing is happening all the time. So when at the end of a year you can think back and pick off the top of your head four, five names of famous people who have passed away in that year, then our brains have the habit of believing that everyone from our youth or everyone we've grown up loving and appreciating is passing away. After all, we haven't been thinking about all the people from the 80s and 90s who haven't died, but these individuals who have passed away have made headline news. I myself have definitely got to the end of certain years and found myself thinking this. I've looked back while talking with friends and jokingly made comments like it feels like everyone's died this year, when in fact they haven't. Probably the normal amount of people have passed away. Now saying that, I know the last two or so years is a bit different, but even before then I was kind of going, oh my goodness, everyone I grew up knowing, everyone who made those good songs when I was a kid, starred in that great film. It feels like they're all passing away, when, when they're not, but our brain has a funny way of dealing with painful information like this. One more reason that kind of surprised me, I wasn't really expecting, uh, but it's the role of grief signalling. When someone we care about passes away, then how we react to this news is a really interesting way for proving to ourselves and also others about how much we cared about the individual who's no longer with us. If your reaction is particularly strong, then this validates your feelings towards this person all along. It also allows you to express your feelings towards this person to the wider community. We all like to express ourselves, and whether you're happy about something, angry, sad, we all in our way make people around us aware of what we feel about things. Grief is a very good way of doing this. Chances are, if it's a celebrity as well, there will be others around the world who are feeling in as much pain as you are right now. This collective grief can be a way to connect with a large community of fellow fans and also, as a group, support each other in the ongoing grief. In his 2011 comedy special, Norm Macdonald talks about people suffering with cancer. He discusses how it's often referred to as a battle now, and that it's almost disrespectful for someone who is dying of cancer to lose that battle as the last thing they do. He likened it more to it being a draw dying by cancer. For if the cancer takes you out, it also takes out its host. And so, as a last action by the individual, they take the cancer down with them. When he was indeed dealing with his own cancer, he chose not to go public but deal with it privately. Feeling as if it is an affliction that takes so many, and that it was his cross to bear. He approached death with humour and bravery, and his memory will live on in the minds of many. So why do we grieve celebrities? Well, there are many reasons. Celebrities for many are friends, and a link to the past. 
and their passing reminds us that death is inevitable, and no matter how special or wealthy you are, none can escape it. The next time that someone you really care about, a celebrity of some kind, passes away and you feel that deep grief in your stomach, take as long as you need to work through these emotions, and understand that these are feelings shared by all. Thank you everyone for tuning in to today's Toasted Tale podcast. I really enjoyed looking into why we grieve for celebrities we care about. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, then you can follow me at Podcast Tale on Twitter and Facebook. And it's on there where I release new episodes and also any thoughts or feelings I have about the subjects I'm looking into at the time. So once again, follow me at Podcast Tale for more. If you want to support the show further as well, then liking, sharing and commenting on this episode can really bring it to new listeners. And also subscribing to the Toaster Tale podcast on whichever podcasting platform you prefer is also a very good way of staying up to date when new episodes are released. There's going to be a change to the schedule coming up soon. Episodes will now be released every Tuesday. So that will be one episode released a week rather than two. This is just because of some scheduling changes in my own personal life and I need to be able to fit everything in. Thank you once again for tuning in today. My favourite part about this job is learning new things about subjects I hadn't explored before and doing so alongside you is really amazing. I hope you all have a lovely rest of day and find success in all you try. I'll speak to you again soon for another toasted tale by the fireside.